I am heading to the London Sketch Club to find out more about silhouette artist Lawrence Oakley from his nephew, Jerry Rendell. Like me, Oakley was a member of this idiosyncratic club, which records the likeness of past members by painting their silhouettes on the wall. This is uh, from a page in a scrapbook uh -huh. uh, when he was about seven years old. Oh my goodness. So he's really been cutting, literally been cutting all his life. He literally has been cutting all his life. But the funny thing is that he then went through the art schools. He, he went to York first, uh -huh. which is where he came from then Leeds, then the Royal College of Art, yeah. but despite having all that formal art training, he decided to make his living from cutting silhouettes. Now that's interesting, and was he happy to do that, or would, he, would you think he'd rather be a different kind of artist? In those days, uh, silhouette cutting was regarded as a minor art, yeah. and I think having had all the formal training, he yeah. probably half felt that he should be doing proper art, yes. but this is what he loved doing. And he went on to do some extraordinary things during the First World War, I'm, I'm right. I mean, that's what, that's what yeah. I kind of he, know Oakley for. He decided to enlist as soon as uh, Britain entered the war. Yeah. And while he was waiting to start his training, he uh, decided to, to design a recruiting poster. Yeah. And you can see these are the early stages of the design. Um, the, the, the actual poster he did looks like that. Uh -huh. And it was taken up by the North Eastern Railway Company, which of course had its headquarters in York. Yeah. And it was used in all their stations, essentially, on the whole of the North Eastern network. Yeah. Uh, it was then taken up by the uh, Parliamentary Recruiting Committee, which was the body that organised official recruiting posters, and it was used all over Britain. Yeah. In Canada, they also... Uh, use his image, you can see it's the same image of the uh, uh, advancing soldier, on their own two posters. Yeah. And this, this image is very interesting. I mean, this almost looks like somebody, doesn't it? I mean, is it somebody? Or, well, or, or is it just a sort of generic soldier? The faces are somebody because his original design was slightly different from this, but uh, when he submitted it, the, the, the person who was making the decision said that he thought that the soldier's face yeah. did not have enough of the bulldog breed about it. Oh, right. <laughs> and he then saw the person who had made that remark, a man called Eric Geddes, uh -huh. who was a big wheel in the uh, railway industry, and he copied his profile. So oh, okay. It's, it's, yes, it's so he's kind of ended up in the silhouette? He ended yeah. up in the silhouette. Having, having yeah. made this remark about That's the bulldog features, right. here he is. <laughs> and so having done that, um, he was then commissioned this time yeah. by the Admiralty to do a poster for the Royal Navy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can see that's got yeah. touches of Nelson yeah. there, England expects. Yeah, but this is the kind of stuff that, 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 that this is a sort of World War One imagery, yeah. isn't it? All, all the things. He, he used to send these back to a magazine, if I'm right. That's he right. He, he, he actually worked in the trenches. Yes. Yeah. He, he worked, he served in the First World War from 1914 to uh, 1919 in fact wow. and throughout that time he cut portraits which he didn't charge for and yeah. therefore they were very popular as uh, mementos to send home but he also sent scenes from around the trenches yeah. back to the bystander magazine yeah. and they were published indeed in a column called uh, trench life in silhouette yeah if you um, look at that one there that's, right. that's um, uh, that's Edward, Prince of Wales, and at the time... Oakley Looking did, very young. Well, he is, because he might... 1919. Right, OK. Uh, I can't remember when he was born, but he was. He was probably 18 or so 19. After the, just after the First World War. Just, yes, yeah. it was just after the First World War, although, of yeah. course, things didn't end immediately on the Armistice Day. Oakley was a bachelor. Uh -huh. uh, he spent part of his year in London, uh, usually working at uh, for, in a studio from the Army and Navy stores. Yes. Sometimes he spent the winter in uh, Edinburgh. And in summer, he moved between resort towns. To working he, on the piers. I well, guess. eventually, yes. that's right. He, his favourite destination in the summer was Llandidno in North Wales. Oh, yes. And yes. I think he went there probably from every year from 1920 until 1958. So. Uh, that was almost like a second home for him. Oh, it was it? a second yeah. home for him. Yes, you, you must go there. It's uh, go in, you can see his studio in the pier. Is it still there? Uh, yes, there, it's exactly as it was in his time. That is on the 
promenade yeah. at uh, Scarborough. Well, in Sandy, no, he was on the pier, but essentially it's the same setup. So we can actually go up there and visit the pier. Oh, yes, and, you and, can. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll jump on a train and, and, and mm. head up to, to, to Clandidno and see if we can find Oakley's old studio. That sounds good, yeah. Jerry, this has been an inspiration. Thank you well, so much. Well, thank for you very much. That's a pleasure.